share with you how to manipulate and remix the Bloom Blast file that comes with the book Learn to Program with Scratch. This is in chapter two, looking at pen and motion and things of that nature. Um, and the challenge that comes with the end of chapter two is to take this Bloom Blast file and to actually get it working um, to understand um, how it all works. So I'm just going to name my file here. Uh, this is chapter two, Balloon Blast. So the, the book itself gives you the code to start with. And I'll put the link in the show notes for you to explore. And it also gives you some code to add to these sprites. I want to walk you through that, and then we're going to explore some variables that come with that. So we're down here. We are in the balloon sprite coding. So one of the things, if you haven't, if you haven't learned yet, is each sprite can have its own palette of code. So the rocket currently doesn't have anything, but the balloon comes with the clones. You can see these five clones here um, as we get started. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go down here to control, and in the controls we have when I start as a clone. We're going to go ahead and drag that block there. We're going to go over here to events. I lied under control and we're going to drag a forever block followed by a repeat until these are all within the same color palette here and we're going to go to the sensing this light blue the cyan and we're going to choose touching color now something that is if you've never done this before I have purple in the book it kind of gives you this brown color which is really hard to figure out what exactly is it that we want um, so when we go to this pen dropper right here and we can zoom in if you look at the tip of this rocket there is a orange tip so we're gonna hover over that just like so we see the orange circle, we click that, and it's going to fill that in. That's what we want. We basically want this code going to run, that when this orange tip hits the balloon, it's going to pop. All right, so now we're going back to control, and we're going to swing over a repeat block of three, and then we're going to go over here to motion, and we're going to turn. We're going to turn to the left three degrees here. So we're going to go in here, and we're just going to type in that three. We're going to then basically do the same thing again so we're gonna drag another repeat here of three and we're gonna turn the other way this is going to get the balloons kind of shaken back and forth so we're gonna go ahead and do that so when we go to run this it's waiting but it's just gonna shake the balloon to the left and to the right left and right back and forth just like so um, and when it's running this forever loop so forever running this right here shaking left right forever ever ever waiting until it touches orange and when it does it's going to kick itself out of this entire forever loop and when that happens we want a couple things to happen one we're going to make the balloon pop so it's going to pop in there and then we want to delete this clone so we want it to disappear when touched. So it's going to be shaking the balloon back and forth, boom, 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 boom. Once it senses orange, which is the tip of the rocket, it's going to kick out of that repeat, and it's going to make the pop sound, and then it's going to delete whatever clone that is that was touched. Pretty straightforward. Now let's go over to the rocket. We've got to get this rocket moving here. So we're going to go over to events when the green arrow is clicked. And we're going to get this rocket set up to be in a certain spot when we begin. And we're actually going to drop this down to negative 200 minus 120. It's going to start it over here um, in this corner as, as we see here. Because 0, 0 will be right in the middle on your grid, on your X and Y axis. So boom, we're going to move it down. All right, then we want to make sure that it's to the front. We want to make sure that it's not going to fall behind um, the objects. And so as we do this, we're going to go here to the looks column. We're going to move to the front layer. And then we're dropping over here. We're going to repeat. We're going to do some more repeating. All right, we're going to... A repeat of five because we're gonna do this five times. We're gonna get five attempts to get to be perfect, and we're gonna throw in a repeat until within this repeat. Repeat until back to the sensing until the keyboard is pressed, or in this case, the space bar. And you can make this any trigger you want, go in there, whatever, but for now, we'll make it the space bar. And when that happens, and we trigger it, it's going to do the following it's going to move 10 steps and 
if it's on the edge, we want it to bounce. So clear down here at the bottom. So if it hits the edge, it's going to bounce back and start going the other way. And when we launch it, we want it to play the fairy dust sound effect. And then we're going to repeat, just like the book says there, repeat 10. We're going to change the Y movement by 15. We're going to change Y. This is going to move the rocket upwards. We're going to wait a half a second. And then we're going to move it again. We're going to go to back to where we started. And then when we're done, we're going to stop everything. Everything will come to an end. So we're going to shift this up here, and we're going to go. So when we click on this green arrow, it's going to move the rocket over here roughly to this area, kind of where it's at right now. It's going to move it to the front, and it's going to repeat this five times in this block. So what's going to happen, it's going to repeat until the space bar is pressed. It's, so it's waiting in this repeat block. Once I press the space bar, boom, it's going to see if I hit. And if it does, it's going to move. It's going to keep moving. All right, it's going to play the sound effect. It's going to shoot up by 15. And if then the orange touches a balloon, it'll disappear. So as it just bounces back and forth, there it is. And away we go. All right, so now we got it working. Let's take a look at some things that we can do to modify. Better game here, and we know that it works. But let's go ahead and just mess with this code to see what happens when we do things. So we're going to start right here. We're in the balloon uh, sprite coding, and this code is we just added, and we can see here that the balloons are shaken just roughly three degrees to the left and to the right as we see right in here. And so what we're going to do is let's change this up a little bit. So one thing we can do is let's make one, let's just keep one three and let's make it ten. So it's going to shake a little bit three degrees to the left and then ten degrees to the right. And when we run this, check out what happens. It starts to move in a whole different pattern, right? Because it's going to go to the left for 3, but then forward to the right for, for 10. We have a difference of 7. So you can start to play around this and kind of make this um, more challenging, you know, if you wanted to, um, as you go through. I mean, what if I made this uh, 25? And yeah, let's make this um, 50. I mean, the beauty of doing scratch in this coding is just that, like, we can't hurt anything as we go through. I really can't. Ah, oh, there we go. Finally got it. It becomes more of a challenge, right? So uh, what we can see here are just the different types of patterns that um, we can get with our balloons to, to increase the difficulty. You know, another thing we can do um, is start to mess around with repeat blocks. And so we don't this we have a whole lot of repeat block. I mean, we could go here with the balloon. Um, if we make that five, and let's just go back to making this three and three like we had. So let's just find out what happens before we had um, three here. Actually, just so we can see obvious things, let's make that ten. Let's see what happens here. So you can see how much slower. It is, right? So the question is, like, what is, is going on here? Or if I make this 3 and we run that. Hmm. Right? So it's it's just not quite the same. So what if we made this 100 and ran that? And we can see now we got some glitches within the code because I can't quite get through there. So we can see there um, as we mess around with this that different things impact what happens in the game. All right, so let's look at some repeats over here. Let's if we messed around over here and uh, with the with the rocket and. Um, Let's go ahead and let's 
change this by this repeat here. What if we make it seven, this first repeat? What do you think is going to happen? Let's find out. Doesn't look like much has happened so far. But what this one does, there's four, five, six. So the game doesn't end. This gives you all your turns right here. So if we go to make this a, a comet here, you know, we can sit there and say this repeat block equals the amount of attempts player gets to pop balloons. So we can start to actually keep some score here. We can actually start to create some variables where we get how many attempts and scores and things like that. So this is an important uh, thing to note. We could come back to this for, for some more advanced stuff. Um, if we look down here at this repeat down here, what do you think this is going to be? What if we made this, not 10, let's make this 25. So what we're seeing here is it's blasting right off the screen there, where before we had 10 in here, and it stops us right there. So it's changing by our Y, 15, and once we hit that space bar, it's going to do that 10 times. But if we change this weight to um, a different time slot, so we know this repeat can impact the distance. Repeat impacts distance of the rocket. But there's another way that we could do that too, right? What if we change this by, let's say, 50? So we keep the repeat the same, but we change the Y. What do you think is going to happen here? Watch this. Woo! See? So there's two ways in which we could impact um, that distance there as well. So you get a good perspective. If we repeat this once for 15, you can see we don't go very far. That's roughly 15 degrees there, which is why we got to make this 10. So we're really changing this by, what, 150, right? So we could, a repeat of 10 with a change by y by 15 is the same as 1 and 150. Check this out. same thing so we get that kind of coordination there um, so if we put repeat equals 1 change y by 150 is equal to a repeat of 10 and a change y by 15 there's just two th ways of doing the exact same thing. So it's the beauty of Scratch and the way it was created is there's no one specific way to do things. And so allowing kids the freedom to express their learning, however they do it, is going to be really, really important as we work through this. You might come up with a way as an educator, but the students might come up with 15 other ways. And the beauty then is to share that. Like, how did we solve this problem? How did we solve this task? And what are all the ways that we can do this? This is how mathematics is changing with the Common Core. We're getting kids to see all these multiple pathways, not being forced to think in a way that we're not inclined to think. And I think this is where we can start to have some relative crossover, not just in coding and computer science, but in our mathematics and our science and our social studies is how can we come to a conclusion? How can we defend it? And how can we prove what we're doing? And I think this is another opportunity to do just that. And so as we think about that, um, let's look at this weight block. There's a weight block down here of, of a half a second. Let's make this five and see what happens. So you can see here, it's going to wait five seconds before it kicks us back down to this go to X of minus 200, 120. And as soon as it has to wait, it goes, puts us there. And then this loop goes all the way back up to the repeat. It's going to do it again. And it's going to sit here until we press the space bar. Nothing's going to happen. Just moving. And then it's going to kick itself all the way down. And so... As we get rocking on that, you know, what if we move this, um, let's make this 100. Holy buckets, that's fast. 
So you can see what's happening there as, as we go through. And if you're not sure what's happening, you can look down here, see how the coordinates are moving. And when we go to hit the space bar, the Y will, will take off as well. So you can see it's going there from that 120. In this case, it's going to 30. We're still waiting five seconds. We'll move that back down to 0.5, and away we go. So these are just some things for you to kind of think about as you explore, like, what do these blocks do? The key is to mess around with them and see what happens. And if you're worried about messing up your code, here's a trick. In your backpack down here, you can load up your backpack where I could drag this code down to my backpack. I can mess around with it and I could always bring it back if need be, if I really, really jack it up. So I could just take this, drag this down my backpack. I've got it right here and I could always pull it back up if needed. All right, my friends, here's just some things to modify your balloon blast. Um, in the next video, we could talk about scores and attempts and different things like that.